Hi, welcome back. Today we'll be using SketchUp to build a more detailed model of our photo booth. To start, I'll show you the design that our project build team created along with a few of its key features. As we saw in last week's video, the photo booth is made up of three walls that make up these corners with different backdrops to take in pictures in front of. The photo booth would be made with plywood and have holes perforating the surfaces so that wind can go through it. The walls would also be hollow so that we could put lights between the two pieces of plywood. So now that we have the quick sketch to reference, let's build this on SketchUp. I'm going to keep the basic shape and dimensions from last week in mind today to create a more detailed model. I'm going to start by building the wall. Using the rectangle tool, I'm going to create a flat rectangle that is 4 feet by 8 feet. I'm laying this down on the green axis and adjusting my screen display so that it'll be easier to add and remove holes from the wall. So as I mentioned earlier, our build team decided to add holes to our plywood walls so that wind can pass through it. To create these holes, I'll be using the circle tool. I'll be creating a circle that has a diameter of 1 inch, so that means a radius of half an inch. I'm just going to type in 0.5 inches to create the perfect size circle. So let's just make sure that all of our shapes are the right size. I'm just going to click on the measuring tape tool and use it to measure out our circle that should be 1 inch wide, and our rectangle that should be 4 feet by 8 feet. It all looks good, so now I'm just going to turn these circles into holes. As you can see, the circle we created is just drawn onto the rectangle, so we're going to have to raise the center of it to create a hole. To do that, I'm going to click the center of the circle. You'll notice that it has a hatch pattern on it, that means it's been selected. All you have to do now is press delete or the backspace button on your keyboard. So now that I have the one hole created, I'm going to duplicate it and place it all over the wall. I'm just going to click the circle once again. Right click on my mouse and go to the copy button and then press the paste button. Then you can move and click the hole anywhere on the wall. Another thing you can do instead of using your mouse to click the copy and paste buttons is use your keyboard. You can look up the shortcuts using the search tool. Control C is used to copy and Control V is used to paste. As of right now, we don't really have a pattern for these holes to be in. So I'm just going to randomly place them all over the wall. These holes are just meant to help wind pass through the photo booth. Otherwise, a tall, flat, light wall could be more likely to blow over on windy days. But our project build team was also thinking of ways to use these holes to create patterns or designs on the backdrop walls. The holes can work well with the lights put between the pieces of plywood to create some really cool effects. Once all of our holes are put in, we're going to add some thickness to the rectangle. For our design, we're going to use plywood that is half an inch thick. So I'm just going to use the push and pull tool and type in 0.5 inches to get our rectangle to the right thickness. I'm just going to adjust my screen display to make sure that my model's looking the way I want it to so far. If you have a mouse, you can click and hold down on your center scroller to rotate your screen or scroll it to zoom in and out. And you can also left click and slide your mouse around to pan the screen. So now that I know that the plywood and the holes in it look good, I'm going to make a component out of it. This just helps to make sure that it moves all as one piece. Once that's done, I'm going to rotate the plywood upright. I'm going to use the rotating tool and align it to the right axis. As you can see, I'm rotating the shape along the red axis, so the protractor will also appear as red. Since it's laying flat right now and I want it to be standing tall and upright, I'll be rotating the shape to 90 degrees. Once our plywood piece is complete, we're going to work on the interior of the wall. As I mentioned earlier, the backdrop wall will be made of two plywood pieces, and it will be hollow in the center so that we can put lights in between. To make the wall hollow, we would need to attach the plywood pieces together by using 2x4s that will only run along the perimeter of the wall. So I'm going to make our first 2x4 that will attach the plywood pieces at the bottom. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle that is 4 inches by 4 feet long, because the plywood piece we've made is 4 feet long. Now I'm going to use the push and pull tool and bring the rectangle to a depth of 2 inches. I'll make it into a component so that it moves as one. And there we have it, our first 2x4. We'll have to attach the plywood pieces to more than just that small 2x4, so we're going to make two more that will attach the pieces by the sides. So I'm going to run through the same process, instead this time I'm going to make these 2x4s 8 feet long. I'll use the rectangle tool as well as the push and pull tool to get it to the right dimensions, and then make it a component. So 
so we will have to rotate this piece since it's going to run along the sides. We'll use the rotating tool to do this. Once again, we'll be rotating on the red axis, so the protractor will appear red. And we want it to be upright, so we'll rotate it to 90 degrees. We'll also want to move this piece 90 degrees along the blue axis to make sure it's in the right orientation and ready to attach the plywood. So just using the move tool, we're going to bring the piece right up to the plywood and the bottom 2x4. As you can see, I didn't account for the size of the 2x4 at the bottom, so the piece sticks out over the plywood by 2 inches. That's okay, I can still edit this piece by selecting the piece, right clicking, then pressing edit component. Then using the push and pull tool, I'll shave off 2 inches from the top. I'll just type in 2 inches in the dimensions bar and click enter, and the piece should be the perfect size now. Once we have that done, we can just copy and paste this piece so one can go on to the other side. Now that the three sides are lined with the 2x4s, we can attach a plywood piece to the exposed side. So I'm just going to copy and paste the plywood and make sure it's aligned properly. Now we have one full backdrop wall complete and we can group all the components of the wall so that they're all attached. Like in our last video, all of our walls will be exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste this wall. We'll need to rotate the walls to the right orientation. Each wall will be 60 degrees apart, so I'll use the rotate tool to do just that. You'll also need to attach the walls. When you're moving your walls, you'll notice that little dots will appear to help guide you and ensure that your corners are touching and your pieces are attached the way you want. Once all your walls are attached, you'll have the finished photo booth. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, if you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see or tutorials, feel free to leave it in the comments. Hope everyone's staying safe and see you in the next one.